Standardizing is anything that avoids you going back to the original problem. The key to 3S is the third S because without a standard, there's no basis for improvement. Welcome to Lean Made Simple, a podcast for transforming your business one step at a time. My name is Ryan Tierney from a company called Seton Matters in Limavati in Northern Ireland. I came across Lean eight and a half years ago and it totally transformed the way I think and the way that we operate in our business. And uh, really excited for the upcoming podcast. Yeah, my name is Matthew Thompson. I'm a podcast producer that's been sucked into the Lean Vortex. And today we're going to talk all about 3S. So Ryan, what on earth is 3S? Define it for us. Yeah, so anybody who's ever heard of Lean before is probably, uh, they've maybe heard of 5S, 6S, 7S. There's loads of S's. a lot of S's. (laughs) But it gets really complicated. And what we like to use is something called 3S. So very simply put, it's a workplace organization tool. That's kind of at a very basic level. It's how to streamline your 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 uh, working environment and make it really organized. And this really ties into building a, a lean culture. Cool. So yeah. what like what are the three S's? Yeah, so three S's are sort, sweep, and standardize. Okay, so at a very basic level, you, you, the idea of, of lean is to uh, add value to the customer. So we want to focus on adding value to the customer. And how we do that is to declutter our physical environment so that our mind is free to think and to to work uh, efficiently. So basically, the first S is sort. We sort away all the stuff we don't need from our working environment. We get it away, out of of the way. Uh, We sweep or clean. And then we standardize. So sort, sweep, standardize. And we're, we're going to get into the detail now, but this is one of the most powerful tools to transform any organization. That's something I'm really passionate about and I can't wait to get into this episode. Unreal. Well, let's do it. One of the things that you said kind of pre-recording is that a lot of people mistake lean for clean. Yeah. Or, you know, cleaning is not leaning. There's like multiple variations of that. Could you unpack that a wee bit more? Exactly. Yeah. We uh, we do tours all the time. People come on a lean made simple tour and a company came last week and they said, yeah, we do lean and clean time, you know, for the last 10 minutes of the day. And I'm like, they, they don't get it yet. It's lean isn't cleaning. People think lean is keeping everything clean and organized. And that's not really what it is. Lean is about efficiency and adding value to the customer. So we're not actually cleaning when we're sweeping, the second S. We're actually cleaning to inspect. We're cleaning to uncover abnormalities. So it's not a cleaning program. Lean isn't a cleaning <laughs> program. Lean is a, is a program to create efficiencies and add value to the customer. And one of the ways we do that is to 3S every single day with every person for an allocated time. And it's important that we do it in the morning before we start work. And before, you know, we were doing this and, and I heard of this concept where you stop before you work for 30 minutes every morning. I thought this was crazy. You know, how can we afford to pay 30, 40, 50 people to stop for 30 minutes before they work. That, mm. that doesn't make sense because, you know, I was getting the calculator out and adding up all this time and it's a lot of time. But the power of 3Sing, uh, you, you know, the, the benefits of 3Sing far outweigh the investment and time uh, in the morning to do it. Yeah, so when we come in here, we're, like, we're brand new to 3S. And so you see these wee drawers here in the wide shot. You know, one of the jobs every day is to hoover and you're hoovering, you're hoovering, you're hoovering. And at first I was like, why on earth am I hoovering every day? This makes no sense. I could do this every other day or whatever, whatever. Yeah. And then literally just a few days ago, I pulled the drawers back and I was hoovering behind it and I realized, oh, those cables aren't really hanging properly. That might get pulled out. There's actually a defect there. Oh, I have an idea for an improvement. Let's actually fix the cable and da 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 And I was like, I think this might be what Ryan's talking about. Yes, and that's exactly it. So 3S allows us or gives us access into every corner of our facility mm. because it, it, it uh, encourages us to question everything. So if we're 3Sing the laser machine, for example, in, in the in, in the frame area, we're, we're 3Sing, but we're saying there's a loose wire, there's a label that's hanging off, there's a leak. Why is there a leak? Oh, because the pipe's not tight. Let's get a plumber in to fix the pipe. So we're not cleaning. It's not a, a cleaning program. It's cleaning to inspect and uncover abnormalities. Wow. And the power of every single person 3Sing every day, that, that will change your company, no doubt. You said that it's important that you start the day 3Sing. Why can we not just, you know, as a team of three of us here, just uh, two, 10 minutes at the end of the day, do a quick hoover? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a brilliant question. And the answer is, is, is really clear. 
we start the day with an improvement mindset. So when everybody drives to work, they park their car in the car park, they walk in the door, they're not thinking about work or production, they're thinking about improvement. Because every single person at our company is a process engineer. They're not paid to do the job, they're paid to improve the job. So it makes sense that we start the day with improvement. So we have an allocated 30 minutes after a morning meeting where everybody goes around and does their 3 essen because the, 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 the thinking is, right, what can I improve this morning? And that thinking is carried forward into the entire working day. That, wow. That's the power of 3 essen first thing in the morning. Crazy. Yeah. And the thing that I think I'm hearing from you is that if you start with a simple task, you know, yeah. like finding the cables and realizing then if you come to actually doing your work, you're already in that mentality. We're like, oh, actually, I could improve this. And I, I've been looking at this this jig for years and years. And now actually, because I've done that small improvement, it's almost like a little tiny domino yes. that leads to a bigger domino and a bigger domino and a bigger domino. <laughs> and then you're coming up with these mad improvements because you did something simple like hoover the floor. Exactly. We call that improvement momentum. Oh, yeah. And it nice. happens all the time. It happened to me yesterday. Just before we started recording, I was showing you the improvements that I'd done yesterday. Yeah. And I started with one, and then I thought, oh, I could improve this, and now I can improve this. And then you see something else. Yes. It's improvement moment, momentum. You just get into this way of thinking where you just want to improve everything. Yeah. And that's what 3S in the morning does. It gets you started into that improvement mindset, and then you're just seeing things all day long. Mm. Yeah. So you talk about like doing it in every area of your factory. One of the things that really stands out for most people when they come and do a, a Lean Made Simple tour is that you guys have found a way to apply Lean into digital spaces. Yeah. So what does what does a digital 3S look like? Yeah, so a digital 3S is 3Sing your computer, for example, so your desktop. So number one, sort. Sort out all the files, delete all the stuff you don't need. Uh, next one, sweep or clean. You know, you can't physically sweep a, a file on a desktop but it's just thinking to organize and, and clean up the stuff you don't need and then standardize. So make folders for specific documents, have them all organized. And the, the power of taking that time in the morning to do that just frees up your mind for the rest of today. Mm. You know, it's, it's, it's a really powerful concept. Give me an example of standardizing the emails. So your email inbox, yeah. how would you standardize that? Yep, it's something. I, I don't get a lot of emails because I don't, I don't like email. I'd rather use uh, WhatsApp. But if I get an email that I would like to unsubscribe to, mm -hmm. I go to that website, unsubscribe to the email so that I never get it again. <laughs> so that, that's standardizing. So what's the problem? The problem is I'm getting all these emails. So how do I avoid going back to the original problem? Yeah, I unsubscribe from that email list. So if we just stay with me here a minute, if we were sorting and swiping, if we were just sorting, we would delete the emails every day as they come in. You wake up the next day, delete the ones you don't need. Wait, yeah. you, you're just keeping doing the same thing, but you're never getting anywhere. So I think we as a team, we're getting the sorting. That makes sense. Okay, you look around. Okay, there's nothing where it's not supposed to be. The sweeping, great. Everything's nice and clean. Clean the tables, you know, mop the floor, blah, blah, blah. But the standardized bit, I don't think we get it yet. So help us. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had a tour from a company, uh, Valerick uh, Chuboloy uh, from Texas. And the guy who, who was on the tour, Alex Ramirez, he came to see us and he told me a definition of standardizing that I've never forgot. It's, it's internalized. It's, it's in my head. He said, standardizing is anything that avoids you going back to the original problem. Mm. So I'm just going to say it again so that people listening to this can internalize it. Standardizing is anything that avoids you going back to the original problem. So if we think about, I'm tidying up the physical factory and there's a brush lying in the corner. So if I make a hook on the wall for that brush, that's the standard location. Mm -hmm. So what was the problem? The brush was, every time we went to look for it, I couldn't find it. So now we've standardized it to avoid us going back to the original problem. If I can't find the drill at my workstation and I make a holder for it, that's standardizing. We're not going back to the original problem. We, right. We've fixed it. So the key to 3S is the third S, standardizing, because without a standard, we're not getting better. Mm. There's no basis for improvement. Okay, so like if I workshop this slightly, so um, I'm walking around the office and I trip over the Hoover 
and then I sort the Hoover. So I put the Hoover away, and then I uh, sweep the Hoover. I clean the Hoover. But you're telling me the standard would be now creating the place where the Hoover always goes, so no one ever trips over the Hoover again. Exactly. So makes sense. But the original problem was you tripped over the Hoover. Yeah. So we're going to standardize that. We're going to make a dedicated location, hang it up on the wall, put markers on the floor for exactly where it goes. And just just think for a minute of every single person in your organization standardized even one thing a week. Mm. Never mind one thing a day, one thing a week. Y- y- your company just gets better. Mm-hmm. It just it has to get better. So you're solving the problems forever, basically? Yes, exactly, yeah. Wow. Have you found in your experience of doing 3S, because you guys have been doing it for nearly a decade, how do you encourage people to get over the obstacle of going for the third S? Because the first two S's are easy. Bam, bam, you get the quick dopamine hit. But yeah. like, it's 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 hard to do the third S. It is, and I'll I'll be the first one to admit that. It is hard. Sorting is easy. We can lift stuff that we don't need and get rid of it. Cleaning is relatively easy. But standardizing is difficult because it means you're having to physically like think of how do I hang this on the wall or how do I create this folder or you know, you're having to be really creative. Mm-hmm. So one of the things we've got really good at at our company is improving the process of standardizing. So it's really easy to standardize. So we've got a standardized bracket for hooking the brush and shovel on the wall. We've got a standardized bracket for the WD-40 holder, an aerosol can holder. We have a standardized pen holder. If you want to standard, create a standard for where your pen goes in your desk, we've got a standardized part you know, on the shelf that we can go and get at any mm-hmm. minute of any day. So we've made the process of standardizing really easy so that everybody feels empowered to do it. Mm-hmm. And if the process is easy, there's more chance of them doing it. Yeah. The other thing we've done is that we have one or two dedicated people that are standardizing experts. You know, that they're the go-to person. If you want a bracket made or you want a shelf put up or you, you want a holder for something, we have a dedicated person that can do that mm-hmm. because it's so important that we follow through and do the third S, which is standardize. Our job as lean leaders is to improve the process of making improvements. Mm. So my job isn't to make improvements, although I do. My job is to improve the process of making improvements. All I'm really doing is providing the fertile soil for the seed to grow. <laughs> you know, that's all I'm doing as a yeah. leader. And that's all any lean leader should be doing is providing the soil, yeah. the fertile soil for the seed to grow. Yeah. So by making the process of standardizing really easy, that that's that's what we're doing. Mad. See why we're tearing the studio apart? Yeah. I'm going to throw <laughs> I'm going to throw ourselves and the producers under the bus as well because we'll have to get a bit creative how we do this. Can you grab that top left drawer and yeah. have a hook through it and basically three yes coach us so critique us. And so it's a big cable of, uh, or it's a big drawer full of cables. These are all audio cables, and they're a mess. So Ryan, yeah. over to you. Yeah, Br- brilliant example actually. It's 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 how we teach 3S at our company is that we physically get something and show. You know, this is an example of 3S. Yeah. So hang on, mm-hmm. let me show it to the camera. Yeah. So this is what it looks like here. Mess. So if I was to 3S this box of cables. The first thing, so so sort, I would sort out any I don't need. You might say, I don't know, you know, this is probably your job to do because I don't know what these are So we don't, we we probably need half of those cables. Right, perfect. They're backups. We're like, oh, well, keep them just in case. Yeah, so I would sort the ones. I would say, okay, we don't need that. We never use that. Get rid of them. Sell them off. Give them away. You know, just get declutter them. They have to be out of the working environment. Yeah. The next thing is sweep. And this seems silly. Like, why would I sweep or clean these cables? They're already clean. But it's cleaning to inspect. You're looking at them going, are the fittings okay? Mm. Is the plug on the end? Is the wireless? Oh, yeah, it is. That needs tightened up. Or mm-hmm. there's there's a loose one. We'll have to get a new one of them. So that's sweep. So it's not cleaning. It's cleaning to inspect or mm. cleaning to uncover abnormalities. And then the third S, which is the most difficult, is standardize. So if this was me, I would divide this box into like 10 different locations. Yeah. I would have a dedicated place for each cable. I put a label on saying this is a five meter, this is a 10 meter, or whatever. Yes. So standardizing. So what's the problem? We can't find the cables. Yeah. So standardizing is anything that avoids you going back to the original problem. Yeah. So we've standardized the place for the cable so that that isn't a problem ever again. Yeah. So I, I can already see how beneficial this is, right? Yeah. But if you were to tell me, oh, quick, I need a five meter cable. I'd be like, let me bring all the cables out and hook through them yeah. and line them up. 
and it would be it would be carnage. And think of the power of what we're doing. We have sixty people doing things like that every day. Mm. So when a customer says, because this is all about adding value to the customer. Yeah. The customer says, I need a product and I need it delivered quick. And we're like, yep, game on, because we know where everything is. We've got the supplies we need. We've got the tools we need. And we can respond to that customer really efficiently and yeah. really quickly. Yeah, crazy. So talk to me the at the Lean Summit when we were all, all how many people was it? Uh, 200 people. 20, yeah. All 200 of us were going around the factory in sync, multiple different stations, 10 stations at the one time. It's incredible. I saw loads of things on the wall. It was actually my one takeaway from the whole summit. I have photos of it, of a weekly 3S schedule. Yes. Talk to me about that. Yeah, G- good point. W- one thing that I don't recommend, if somebody is listening to this podcast, I do not recommend that you go back to your company tomorrow and assign every single person 30 minutes to 3S <laughs> because it'll be absolute chaos because we done it. And it didn't work. Well, is it just like hoovers flying everywhere? Or like, what does it look like? Uh, it's just, it's just <laughs> Dead all wipes just like exploding. Uh, yeah, because people see it as a cleaning program. Right. Everybody just, they're going around cleaning everything they can see. And it's, it's actually a wasteful process. Mm. So I don't recommend that at all. What I do recommend is teaching and training your people on 3S. And training, training them on exactly how to 3S. And then assigning one or two people at a time until eventually everybody in the company understands this concept. Uh, one of the things that we found earlier, uh, early on in our lean journey was that it was just a free-for-all. People were just going and 3 s and what they thought was right. We were maybe 3 s in the same area four times in a week <laughs> when something else over here was forgot about. Yeah. So now every single person in our company has a 3 s weekly schedule. So on a Monday we're 3Sing the desktop and the computer. On the Tuesday, we're 3Sing the entrance hall at the reception. On a Wednesday, we're 3Sing around the compressor area, you know, different areas. So every single person has a dedicated 3S schedule Mm -hmm. and it keeps the whole thing really organized and really structured. Unreal. Mm -hmm. How do we get started? Someone's just stumbled across this video, they've typed 3S in and they've listened to this. Where do we go from here? When we started Lean eight, eight years ago, we'd done like a massive 3S. We got rid of three 40-foot loads of stuff. There was shelving, old desks, old office chairs, filing cabinets, all the stuff that had been sitting around our company for years, just decluttering the place. And the release, I still remember those those trucks driving out the gate with all the stuff. We just sold it all off and got rid of stuff. Mm. The release and the relief that I felt when we got rid of all that stuff, there's just like a just like an air of simplicity around the yeah, place. Yeah. You know, there's a, like a load lifted off your shoulders. Mm-hmm. And now when you walk into our factory, the floors are clean, the walls are white. It's really simple. It's really clean. And we've decluttered all the stuff so yeah. we can focus on focus on our work. 100%. And that, that relieves almost like a, a cognitive load. Yes. Like in it, almost physical, like... I remember I shared with you before, a long, long time ago, we used to work with hoarders. Mm-hmm. And so yes. people who, whose houses were the opposite of what we're talking about. Yeah. And people's lives would transform whenever mm-hmm. they actually would, would get rid of some of these things they were holding on to. And I meant to talk to you about it before. You ever read the, the Marie Kondo book? I yes. think she's Japanese. Yeah, I did, well, yeah. The magical power of tidying up, like That's something right. like that. Yeah, yeah. And I buy into that, man. Like it, yeah. it, it genuinely, like a lot of times on the show, you've talked about how lean frees up the mind. And... This sort of 3S stuff, I think, really frees up the mind and mm-hmm. frees up the physical space, frees up the mental space, the digital space. It's awesome. Yeah, it really is. Even at home, I've got a drawer, you know, in the bathroom. It's all in Kaizen foam, a toothbrush, a toothpaste. The, you know, it's all it's all really well dialed in yeah. and really organized. And it's such a relief. Every morning I open that drawer, it's just like, <laughs> you just smile when you see it. Yeah. It just makes your day it's a really good start to the day, to the day, knowing that there's clarity. You know, first thing in the morning. So even before three S time, when I go to work, <laughs> I'm seeing that clarity. You know, in, in the morning when I when I wake up. So what could you do after this podcast? The next drawer you go to, open the drawer, the stationary drawer in your in your office, or the the drawer where all your batteries and all your clutter is at home. <laughs> the junk drawer. Everybody has one of those drawers, <laughs> and just do a small scale 3s just to see the power of it mm-hmm. sort out all the stuff you don't need sweep take all the stuff out clean it sweep it all mm-hmm. 
and then standardize, say, this is the box for the batteries, this is where I'm going to put all the pens, this is where I'm going to put the, the phone chargers. Yeah. And just think about the feeling you get when you do that. Mm-hmm. And I guarantee you'll get hooked on this because you just want to keep doing more and more and more. You'll do it at home and then you'll apply it to your work and then you're a lean maniac. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you said something mad just before we started and maybe it would be a good place to close. You said the level of 3S shows how much somebody actually gets lean. Yeah. What does that mean? So I get invited to companies all the time to help them with lean. Um, and as soon as I walk in, I can just tell, all right, I can tell the level of engagement that they're at by the level of their 3S. So everybody knows Paddy. He works at Satan Matters. He's, he's famous now. The man who does the work of six men. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So Paddy is an absolute lean maniac. He totally gets it. So if you walk into Paddy's area and you see Paddy's area, Paddy does the wood. He works in the wood department. There is no sawdust on the floor. His workstation is absolutely immaculate. Mm. Every single tool is dialed in. It's almost like a showroom. It doesn't look like a working factory. It's almost like a like a like a fake showroom that's been <laughs> set up. People don't believe that there's any work happening there. Paddy's level of 3S is a reflection of how much he internalizes lean. Right. Um, I might go to a factory and some areas are really good and some areas are at a different level. And it's just people at different stages on their lean journey. And the more you internalize lean, the more you get the stuff, the sharper your 3S becomes. Wow. And it, it just shows engagement. So if we have a new person that started, they've only been with us two or three weeks, their three S and isn't at the level of other people, and that's okay, because it's a journey. But uh, you're it's a hundred percent right. Your physical uh, appearance shows what's going on internally. Wow. Well, if you'd like to come and see Paddy's showroom, as I'm going to refer to it from mm-hmm. now on, yeah, uh, in a lean made simple tour in Limavady in North Ireland in uh, the Ryan's factory with the team of Seaton Matters, highly highly recommend checking it out. There's a link in the description for you to book that for yourself and your team. It's what kickstarted our lean journey. And uh, we describe Seaton Matters as like a living lean metaphor. And it allows you to internalize these things and take it back to your business, whether it's a podcast business or a carpentry business or whatever. And so, Ryan, I love today. Today was great. And we broke yeah. format and took a bit of a risk, but uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And Aye. I really appreciate all so the, all the um, even all the advice you gave us today. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you. Just another note, maybe on the tours, we're actually building a team to host more lean tours because the amount of tours we're getting is just wow. it's crazy. You know, I think I was telling Mark earlier, I think like 40 or 50 people booked in for a tour this week. So we're actually building, developing a, a, a new team to host lean tours because the interest in lean, I don't know what happened, but the interest in lean over this past six months to a year is just through the roof. So... We used to have a really long waiting list for tours, like we're five or six months out. We're in the middle of building a team to be able to do more tours and get more people through the door to share this message with as many people as we can. Unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Ryan, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you.